Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of a WordPress website video series. In the last video we got a WordPress website running in a Docker container and we could see in the Docker command line that we had it hosted on port 80. But we weren't able to show the website because we're not able to access port 80 outside of our local network. So in this video we're going to look at exposing port 80 on our router and then showing that our Docker container running on our Raspberry Pi running a WordPress website is accessible to the outside world. So what we will have to do is the same as we did in video five in this video course, which is to poke a hole in our router using the NAT firewall rules to map an internal address space to an external address space. In this case, we're going to be mapping internal port 80 to external port 80. Once done, we're going to run the WordPress container on the Raspberry Pi, as we did in the previous video. And then we're going to open a browser and see what happens. What do you think is going to happen? Will it show a website or won't it? Well, we'll see. What I want to make really clear at this point is that port 80 is the default port for running HTTP traffic over, which means that we may be able to see a website on port 80 at our public IP address when this is done, but it won't be encrypted. And that's not good enough. On the modern internet, we absolutely have to encrypt our website, and later on we'll be looking at how our Nginx reverse proxy container we will, we will create will give us that functionality. But for now, we can at least show that we'll have a WordPress website running on our Pi. Now, you may like to visit video five in this series, where I talk about in a little bit more detail how I set up my NAT firewall to expose a particular port. This is a screenshot of my uh, network rule, my NAT firewall rule. And in the previous video, I had just exposed port 3389 externally and translated it into an internal port 22. And that's because my Raspberry Pi is running the SSH service on port 22. And I wanted to expose a different port. In this case, it's 3389. I do tend to change this number for security reasons. So currently it's 3389 to the outside world. So what we do this time is we're going to be exposing port 80 to port 80. The translation is port 80 externally to port 80 internally. This will mean that our Raspberry Pi container, which will be exposing port 80 on the Docker network, will then be able to go through our uh, firewall on our router out to the world, and we can then use our public IP address to access our website. So visit video five if you want a little bit more information on how I did it, or have a go yourself, go into your, um, into your router settings, go to your firewall and see if you can create a rule that allows you to go from 80 external to 80 internal. Okay, so now let's go to our desktop and let's see if we can get that Docker container running and have a look at what's happening. Okay, so on my desktop as usual with my PowerShell open and ready to go, I'm gonna SSH into my Pi. Now I've reset my Docker environment by deleting everything just to start with a fresh clean slate. So I'm going to have a quick look at HTOP and have a look at the resources that are being used. So we're currently using 135 megabytes of RAM. This is quite a common number. We'll recognize it from a previous video, which is quite a lot of our available storage. And that's not actually running any containers. This is largely the memory used up by running Docker services in general, just the background Docker daemon and running fail to ban. OK, so let's go out of there. Let's now use some Docker commands that we learned from the last lesson. So Docker, oops, Docker container ls to show that there aren't any running containers. And we could do Docker container ls minus a to see if there were any left in the history. There aren't. Okay, let's see if there are, are any images. Docker image ls, no images, excellent. So it's a completely fresh slate. So let's now um, obtain the WordPress image from the Docker registry by typing in docker run WordPress. And what this will do, it will say, okay, WordPress doesn't exist locally on the Pi, so I'm going to go off to the registry, I'm going to download it, I'm then going to start running it. And as with the previous video, we will see very shortly that this process will continue on into running the container and will occupy our shell. We won't be able to do anything in this shell. In anticipation of that then, I will open up another PowerShell and bring it over. So I've got another one here, ready-made, ready for when this is finishing. There we go. Okay, 
So what I'll do now is I will stop the video and we'll come back uh, when this is complete. Okay, so the process of pulling the image and starting the container has concluded. So you can see here we've got it running and as with the previous video, this has occupied the shell because the container is running perpetually. So in this shell, I'm going to go into my SSH connection for my Pi and I'm going to see what's running. Hopefully now we're going to see the Docker container running, which it is. Um, and we can see from the last video, we have port 80 exposed, or at least we think that's what it means. There is at least something going on with port 80 here. Okay, so before we uh, go on to seeing what's going on and, and looking in a web browser, I just want to cover two more Docker commands. And the first one is, we haven't covered yet, docker container stop. Um, we haven't actually stopped and started any containers, and it's an interesting thing to do because what this is also going to show us um, almost by accident, is how to run a container in the background. So let's stop the container we've got running by starting the name, starting typing the name of the container name over here, and then pressing tab to complete it. And now I'll press enter, and that will stop the container. And you can see in my other shell, the container has been stopped. There is a similar command, unsurprisingly, for starting a container. So if I type in docker container start and use the same name, that stopped container in our history can then be restarted. But what we haven't seen up to now is that this container will now run as a background process. So it's not running in this shell, it's, well, it's not running, it's not occupying this shell, and it's not occupying this shell, but it is running in the background, which we can confirm by typing in docker container ls. Now this isn't the pattern you will follow to run a container in the background. You don't have to type docker run container name or image name and then stop it and start it, uh, although that will work. There is actually a minus d command you can run to run a uh, container as a background process, which we'll get to a bit later. But for now, we're happy that we've got the WordPress container running. So with that in mind then, the next thing to do is to have a quick gander at our resources and just confirm how much the default, completely blank default WordPress container is using, just to keep a close eye on our, Word, uh, our Raspberry Pi resources. And we have to do this because I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3 here, um, which is the lowest Pi that I would used for this course and I need to keep a close eye on that limited 926 megabytes of spare RAM. So thankfully the WordPress container as you can see here is quite lightweight and this is the point I want to make. Containers do tend to be quite lightweight. They can be really bloated but typically a container, you, uh, an image you will download from a, a registry on Docker registry will be as lightweight as they can make it. So in this case we're not using a huge amount more. Obviously we will be as we start running more containers and we add content, but at the moment it's quite streamlined and that's good. Okay, sorry, my computer's making noises. So the next thing to do is to see if we can get this uh, website exposed through uh, the internet. So I've got this ready-made. Um, this here is a uh, incognito uh, Chrome window. Uh, it, I'm using incognito because I don't want any um, history to, to confuse things, I don't want any cache, and I've typed in my uh, public IP address. So you will need to type your public IP address in here. Now an IP address is just another way of referencing a website in short. So a website is just pointing to a particular IP address. Uh, a domain, sorry, is just pointing sorry, to a particular IP address. So in this case, I've got my public IP address in the domain, in the, sorry, in the URL, uh, a bar in the browser. I'll press enter and I would expect it to work but it doesn't and this is an important concept in Docker I now want to cover. Why doesn't this work? Now you, you're probably thinking oh bugger have I made a mistake with my um, exposing of port 80 in the firewall but you probably haven't. It's probably absolutely fine. We can check that another way but I'm going to assume you've done it right. No what's actually happening here is something else entirely so I'll just minimize that. What's happening is Port 80, though, is exposed by the container, it's not exposed through the network, the uh, Docker network. So Docker runs up a network when it starts, and it's called the default network. Um, and you need to poke a hole in that to then make it available externally on your local machine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to stop the uh, container that's running using the stop command that I showed a few minutes ago. OK, and I'm going to start a new one with docker run WordPress. But this time, before I go any further, I'm going to add an argument just here. And that's going to be my port mapping 
So minus P, which refers to ports. And then I'm going to map my local, which is this one, port 80, to my Docker port 80. So inside the Docker container, it's exposing port 80 in its own little containerized world. But outside of it, we want to relate that internal 80 to our real port 80. That's on our Raspberry Pi. So internal network, the Docker network's port 80 to our Raspberry Pi's port 80. Let's get that going. Now, because we already have the Docker image available, it'll just start a new instance of that image called a container, and that's now running. So I'm now going to go to this window that's now free and type in docker container ls. Not just to show that it's running, though that is useful, but the main reason I'm doing this is to show that we've now got a different uh, piece of information here in the ports column. It's telling us our local mapping to our internal container mapping. And what we've done is we've mapped our local host to, um, and local host on the Pi is the Pi's local host, port 80 to the container port 80. And that's important. Whenever you want to expose a port from your container, you have to still map it to the local system's port space. So this is just the container's port space. We need to map it to the local system's port space. In our case, the Raspberry Pi's port space. So now we're saying we're mapping internal container 80 to the port 80 on the Raspberry Pi. Now that's done, hopefully now, we can see WordPress appearing. So type in your public IP address into the URL bar on your um, browser. Press enter and I've got my fingers crossed now because, ah, excellent, there we go. This is almost a landmark moment in this video series. So we've now managed to get our website, which is at the moment just the default WordPress setup page, exposed through our home router uh, out to the world using a Docker container. So this is running on your Raspberry Pi, but you're addressing it from an external address space, port 80. By default, this is port 80, by the way, because it's HTTP, which is brilliant. It means anywhere in the world now, if you type in this IP address or your IP address uh, into a browser, it will give you your Raspberry Pi hosted WordPress website. OK, we'll leave that there. There's still a lot more to talk about, about setting this up properly. And WordPress absolutely needs to have a database. This is also not secure. This is running on port 80. It's not encrypted, as you can see here. That's no good as well. It's also not a domain name. It's just an IP address. That's also not good as well. So lots of things to sort out. If you found this useful, if you really have, please like the video. It really helps me to see people finding it useful. Just a little like click would help. And if you could subscribe to my video series, you'll get new videos. When they come out, you'll be made aware of them. So you can continue this course and any other videos I do on using Raspberry Pis for interesting projects. So thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video.